You know, one thing that's kind of become tradition here on our on our extra life marathons is to uh, is to kind of wind things down with uh, a goofy unlicensed game um, uh, called Bible Buffet uh, for the NES. It's by Wisdom Tree, the same folks that brought you Bible Adventures and uh, 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 Journey to the Promised Land and all those other you know infamous religious games. And, but the thing with Bible Buffet is that really the only religious parts are the questions, little pop quiz questions it asks you. Um, and, and then, of course, there is a little bit of Christian imagery in the game. Because the, the point of the game is to collect food for your food bank, right? You're not killing enemies. You're not, you know, stomping them out. You're walking around levels. Each level is like is, is a two-screen, almost like a mini Zelda dungeon. And the game is played on a big Candyland board, essentially. And you just spin the wheel, and you land on the thing. And each of those squares on the game board is its own two-screen uh, uh, combination of stages. Like, each individual one. I just think, given the number of spaces on the board, I've, I haven't played every single collection of, of, of uh, little mini-games, little stages, little mini-stages. On, on the game yet, and uh, it's kind of one of those things where every time we um, every time we, we play Bible Buffet, we get to see you know a handful of new ones and some of the old ones that we've seen before. So uh, it's just a game you, you can play at one player. Uh, it's one of those games that it's more fun to play with with multiple people, um, but nobody wants to play that game with me because it's kind of a Christian game and they just give me a weird look. And I'm like, look, I'm not saying that because I go to church and everything like that. I think it's just a fun game. You should give it a chance. Like, it's not... It's not some weird religious... It's not indoctrination. Though, uh, like I said, there are pop quiz spaces, both on the spinner and on the board. And um, uh, one of you guys... I forget who. It was like Fangemon or maybe maybe it was Bro Films. One of y'all hooked me up with a uh, PDF of a bunch of scans of the quiz book that you're supposed to play the game with. So, before we get into Bible Adventure... Bible Adventures. Bible Buffet... Uh, let's. I would like to see if we can answer some of the questions. We're going to play along with the quiz book. I think friends in the Bible seems uh, deceptively simple, which is one that I think I, I think I'd like to attempt. So we'll, we'll go with friends in the Bible this year. So that's category number one hundred three. So it's going to ask us that whenever we turn the game on. So, anyways, we'll see. We'll see. You guys will see Bible buffet. I mean, you, you guys will understand it once we um. Once we, once we hop over to the game. So let's switch over. Always wait seven seconds between power off and power on. See the manual. Uh, SC uh, chapter 6 verse 0. Okay. Hell yeah. Last time I heard this song, I was shooting a fucking slot machine in Star Fox. One player, just me. Uh, question category, I think 103 is the thing in the quiz book? Yeah, 103. Alright. Well, you guys know who we gotta be. It just so happens they give us eight spaces. No. Poop ton, that's something different. Poop town. Alright. Those voice samples, man. This is a, this is a high quality production. <laughs> Buster Keaton rules. Thou shalt not turn it off and then on again. All right. Thanks, God. Right out of the gate, I get a free key. And we get to spin again because I'm the only. The keys actually come into play later on, up in the top of the, like the top half of the board. There's uh, sections of the. Uh... All right. All right. <laughs> Hit me again. Uh, there's parts of the levels in like the later, like the late game, that there's really good things that are hidden behind, um, uh-oh. You're gonna give me keys and ask me questions, huh? Okay. Uh, but yeah, there's like later parts in the, in the game where you need a key to get in and there'll be like a, a really good power-up back there, like a whole lot of food, and you need keys to get back there, otherwise you can't get in. So, question 15. From Friends in the Bible. Jonathan would have told David if he had the last 
the least inkling that Sol was determined to harm him. It sounds like a good thing to do. I don't know. That's what friends do. Question 16. Jonathan planned on deceiving David about Saul's plans toward him. Okay, now I'm rethinking my answer to question 15. I think that that's false and this is true. Jonathan was willing to give up his friendship with David to advance himself. That's probably true. He's probably a bad, probably a bad dude. Boy, do I look like a dick. I'm sorry, Jonathan. <laughs> <laughs> Shit. <laughs> John and David were bros, or whatever, whoever the guy was. All right. Oh, jump ahead ten spaces. I, I want to play some Veggie Land. All right, here we go. So you can see, we're going through. I'm. Um, little man walking around obviously and I'm shooting I'm, I'm throwing spoons at my enemies as soon as I touch the the bottom of the screen I'm going to uh, do that okay you got a bomb button I'm pretty sure I can blow a hole in that see that makes sense because otherwise how would I get in there I think the knife increases how much damage I do Next screen. Uh oh. The tomatoes are coming to life. So the only thing I can't pick up here is the lettuce. I don't know what my high score is for this game. I'm, I haven't really kept track of that. Like I said, this is a this is a game that most of the time, getting someone to play this game with me is literally takes an act of God. I mean, this has stuff to do with the Bible. It asks you questions about it. But it mostly, I, I guess it mostly just instills in you the, the notion of, you know, sh sharing. And helping out at the local church pantry, I guess. I don't know. Potato Land! <laughs> Those guys are knocked out. So see, I got I got 50 there because I got a combo. We got a fork as an item. What does that do? Maybe the fork increases your... Something, actually, no. Something increases projectile speed and something increases projectile damage. You gotta dodge those guys. You can't kill the green guys. Little things of zucchini. He's slicing off parts of himself and throwing them into the oven. That's dark. Is this guy throwing mashed potatoes at me? Oh wait, that hurts! But, but ma mashed potatoes are good! What have you done? What have you- you've tainted the mashed potatoes. <laughs> you get your- you take your demo- your- take your demon potatoes out of here! I can't wait till we get to Salad Land. Looks like they're big fans of science over there. All right, for now we're in Potato Land, though. See, I don't think we've played this one before. I don't. This doesn't look familiar to me at all. Uh oh. Okay. <laughs> I, lo I lost. You you just start the map over again. Basically, you lose your turn. All right, so the little cauliflower guys, whatever those guys are, Brussels sprouts. Uh, I think you gotta hit them with a bomb to kill them, and I don't have that capacity. Well, this level kind of blows. There's not really a not really a lot to get. Each of the French fry guys are only worth two points apiece. I guess you could you could lure them around. Oh, the timer's not on. That's okay. I'll start the timer. Bible buffet is just is just for fun and games. Hey, there we go. Oh, bonus square. Quiz time, though. Alright. Question 18. Jonathan made a covenant with David, saying, May the Lord call Saul's enemies to account. Okay, good. He's probably... He, he's a good guy. David loved Jonathan as he loved himself. 
Well, that sounds, you know. Jonathan told David to wait by the stone Ezel. Sure. That's the that's the biblical equivalent of uh, uh, the Melissa Etheridge song, Come to My Window. Uh, two, out of, two out of three ain't bad. All right. This world record run is falsified. I'm gonna get an extra heart container. All right. Might might need those. Layer one. As for the next time we do Twitch sings, it might be later this week. I don't know. It depends. Oh, pop quiz. We're going back to the quiz book. Okay, question twenty-one. Jonathan was to shoot four straight arrows through the rock as if shooting at a target. Yeah, that sounds dumb like it would be in the Bible. If Jonathan said, look, the arrows are beyond you, that meant David was safe to return. Okay. David's place was empty at the New Moon Festival. No, he had all his friends were there. These are true false questions, and I'm getting them... I'm just, all right. Thanks for the key. Got a lot of them. Oh, we're going on the shortcut, I think. Oh man, we're in Breadland. We please get fast food land. I don't want to get. I don't want to beat the game as fast as possible. I just want. I want to see. I want to see Bible buffet land. There we go. That's more like it. Oh, it's this stage with all the with all the croissants. You gonna finish that croissant? Oh, damn it. That guy hit me. That's what I get for quoting that, I guess. Oh, this is- this is this stage! Where there's these two pieces of toast that are just having fun throwing a knife back and forth at each other. <laughs> I forgot about that. Yeah, it gets really boring out here, doesn't it? Alright, so the spoon that I picked up gives me a second projectile to throw. They're so happy, too. It's like, here, catch. Training to be in the goddamn circus. I don't know. <laughs> All right. Oh, jump ahead tens, but come on, man. I don't want to skip through the game. We want to we wanna see, we want to enjoy it. We're gonna miss all the pizza land! This is Pizza Quest! We gotta be in here! It's pineapples! I, I believe this is sacrilege! You get the. Hang on. You can push the red pepper flakes. Yeah, you can push the pepper flakes and get stuff. Sometimes. Not always. There we go. Only a couple. Can I push the pizza button? No, you can't push. Can I blow those up? No. Christians are saying they want to ban Doom. But here, here's a level all dedicated to putting pineapple on pizza. And there's nary a piece of ham to be seen in sight. If anything, I think Doom is a Christian game. Because your guy goes into hell and he just starts blowing demons to fucking kingdom come. That's a pretty Christian thing to do, all things considered. Yeah, it's gory, but I mean, he's doing the Lord's work. Goes to hell to send them back to hell. Oh, you gotta, you gotta kill these guys with a uh, uh, bomb. How do I get in there? I want, I want to get in the barbecue zone. Oh, those guys are worth a lot of points, at least. Oh, damn it. 
Stop. Oh, there we go. That's a magic missile. So I guess I can't get in there. As far as I know, there's not a... There's gotta be a way, though. Like, pushing a block or something, or... Can I push this? That, th these blocks look different. Oh, fun fact! Buster Keaton Rules says, Doom is a Christian game, at least one of the creators is heavily religious. See, I just thought that, like, you know, like... You journey into hell, and all those, like, satanic temples and things like that, and you're just you're annihilating everybody. I mean, that's... Seems like, it, it seems like a pretty Christian thing to do. Just saying, all things considered. Look under that barbecue... Hey, you left that perfectly good hot dog laying on the ground right there. I think we've been to this map before, and I hate it. This was not a very good stage. Damn it. Now they're going now they're going crazy. Just get me out of here. Get me out of here. That wasn't a good level. That was that was that was not a good that was not a good uh barbecue land stage. Oh, here we go. What the hell is this? hit those guys? Do I blow those guys up? No. Okay, so these guys just can't be touched. Whoops. Damn it. That's not what I meant to do. under any of those. That's strange. That's really strange. Yeah, not a single thing. This level's kind of lame, too. I Actually, hang on. How much are the stakes worth? Oh, they're worth five points apiece. So that's actually not that bad. Can I push the grill? I can push the grill around, but these guys seem to be able just to walk through walls at will. Oh, there's just a lot of crap to push around in this level that you could maybe find things underneath. I don't know. Yeah, there was a heart there, but I got... I, I, I took damage recoil and went straight to the exit. Yeah, nice of them to make the collectibles look exactly like the enemies. The meat that doesn't dance off the off the screen is what you wanna is what you wanna pick up. Going to Freezer Land. Deep in the heart of Freezer Land. All right, so we can put bombs down here, but I don't know if we want to do that just yet. Let's blow those up. Okay, once you start walking on ice, you can't stop. You just start sliding. I'm gonna inject my. Oh damn it! I was say I'm gonna inject myself right here, but I started pushing the wrong button. I hit bomb instead of fire. Cause you can get you can get a pretty big combo right here on this stage. I'll show you. Skips tips for feeding filling up your church food pantry. Boom! Look at that. If you walk diagonally, you can, uh... Oh, uh, yeah, see, I should have gone... Oh, no, we can still go up top. We can still get the key. We're good. Nice touch with the, uh... Living Ice Cube guy. I see somebody's played Lolo before. Alrighty, Necros, thanks for swinging by, man. I'm probably going to do a cleanup stream for the missing challenges tomorrow, but this is pretty much probably going to be the end of the main show. 
You, know, you want me to kill the snowman? I'll do that. You got it. Your wish is my command. I shall blow up the snowman. Fuck you, Frosty. <laughs> it's good. It's good. Good night, Bears fan as well. Thank you for swinging by. I appreciate it. All right, we're on magic space. But first, a quiz. Time to flip over to my Bible handbook. Question 24. On the second day of the festival, David's seat was empty again. Maybe it was... Okay. Jonathan told Saul that David was not there because he was sick. Yeah, okay. Saul was understanding about David visiting his family. No. See? Um, Saul sounds like a dick. And I'll take a heart container. All right. If I wanted to, I could have hit. I could have chosen to go up by one space, but that would have advanced me by like ten. We would we would have missed out on more freezer land. One. Well, never mind. Oh, do we get to spin again? Okay. I was about to say. Well, easy come, easy go. There. And we're in Snackland now. Pretzels. That's what I'm talking about. Bonbons. Oh, what, what is this? What am I... Can I blow that up? Huh. That's interesting. Oh, whoops, didn't mean to do that. Skip the screen. I was trying to get... Trying to get a, uh... What am I trying to say? I was trying to get a combo off on him. Would anybody care for a bonbon? Not if they're coming to life and trying to kill me. Pop quiz. Yay. Ask me all the questions I don't, I don't know any of the answers to. Jonathan agreed with Saul that David should die. What? No, they, they, I thought they were bros. Jonathan was grieved at his father's shameful treatment of David. Probably. Jonathan and David agreed they were not good friends. No, they're best, they're good bros. Hell yeah! Look at that, I got a star on that one. I passed that pop quiz. I knocked that one out of the park. You don't get anything for that. At the very end of the game, it's almost it's almost like Mario Party where they add up like the totals of who got the most questions right, and we're at, back to more Bible questions. Question 30. David did not want to show kindness to any of Jonathan's family. No. Not knowing what I know now. Zeba was Jonathan's only son. Now, he probably had a lot. Zeba told David that Jonathan had a son with leprosy. That's probably true. See? Oh. Well, he was the, there, There's no no leprosy. <laughs> Friends of the Bible, a.k.a. John and David Five Ever. I don't know if I have a complete quiz book. I might not. I feel like I'm missing a lot of things. Snack time. Oh, yeah. See, I haven't seen this one yet. This is new to me. You know what I would really like to do? Some oh my god, the bonbons are going crazy. Okay, now I was just able to kill these guys by hitting them with uh with the regular attack earlier, and now they're all of a sudden they're invincible. Okay, I'm getting the hell out of here. I would like to play this game with like a game genie code so that no matter what you spun, it was always a one. Just so that I could play like every single map. Seems like it'd be fun to do. Okay, you gotta watch out. This candy's gonna be going crazy. Can I blow up the candy?
Yes, I can blow the candy up. <laughs> we should think we should be putting candy in the church food pantry. I don't know. Oh, damn it. I would land on the shortcut, so I, I guess I'd have to like adjust the game genie code on the fly and turn it on and off as I as I went along. Maybe make it so that the shortcuts instead of that I would just skip ahead two spaces and, instead of one. Taco Salad, thank you for the raid. Howdy everyone from Taco Salad's channel. I appreciate it. Oh, hang on, I'm getting hit by flying candy. <laughs> I'm Draco, this is Gatorbox. We're actually winding down the last part of our, our second day of extra life. It's not gonna be our, our final day though. We got one more coming up about late afternoon tomorrow. So we're uh, gonna be working on that. Finkelroy, thank you for the follow. Appreciate it. I'm out of bombs. We can't blow up any more candy. <laughs> easy come, easy go, I guess. How am I gonna get through this without being able to use my bombs on the candy? We're just gonna have to man mode it. Oh my god. Oh my god. Oh my god. I wanna get down there because there's a projectile upgrade. Yeah, it's not enough to hit those guys yet. But yeah, it's kind of it's kind of tradition here to kind of chill out. Uh oh. Oh no, I'm on this thing. Is it gonna count? Is it gonna notice? Okay, it did notice I was on the shortcut. It didn't send me back. This dang Candyland board game. Going to Liquid Land. Sounds like a liquor store. But yeah, it's kind of a tradition now on the channel to uh, wind things down with uh, a little bit of. Uh, uh, Bible buffet. It's just kind of a goofy little, uh, goofy little NES party game that's ostensibly Christian themed. Shoutouts to the duck up there, that's cool. Best character in the game. I don't think I've played this map before. This seems new to me. This is pretty cool. Oh, I'm getting hit. Taking on damage. Everything in here is worth a lot of points. Tell you what, nobody's going hungry in the house in the house of Draco tonight. Player one. <laughs> oh boy, Liquorland, my favorite la <laughs> favorite level. Or uh, where are you doing some extra life running of your own uh, uh, taco salad? I've been I've been busy running running my marathons. I can't do 24 hours all at once anymore, so I just do two 12-hour shifts. I don't think I've seen this stage either, but it looks like the uh, looks like the teapots are only worth one point apiece. Meanwhile, little coffee cups are big money. Yeah, the only two guys is not enough to get a combo off on, unfortunately. Player one. Well, we, we skipped the majority of the early game, unfortunately, so I guess we're just heading toward the end. We Actually, we are in the part of the board where, if we have keys, we might be running into places to use them. Where am I? Okay. Drinks. Oh my god. Stop, 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 stop! You know what? I'm gonna, I'm gonna take another swing at this one, cause I can, I can probably rack up a pretty, pretty impressive combo if I don't screw this up. Oh, you weren't doing it this year? Yeah, the pandemic really. I was getting kind of stir crazy too. That and the election, man. That was, that was making me go, go bonkers. But this kind of helped me keep my mind off of it and kept me focused on some stuff. Gave me something to schedule and something to practice and. Plus, I, it's been kind of a, 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 a tradition each year. Uh oh. But how, how? It's going the wrong way.
All right. Uh, <laughs> okay. I guess I was just supposed to take a hit there because they put a heart at the end. Or maybe if I had a bomb, I could have put it down and, like, disrupted the pattern. I don't know. Two. Going to Fruitland. I'm excited. Here we go. Fruit time. Gotta watch out for the killer strawberries. Some of these stages- oh my god, the, the grapes. <laughs> the grapes are going crazy down there. So there's a- there's a weapon upgrade up there. Or projectile upgrade, I guess. There's no weapons. This is a this is a good this is a this is a Christian game. Oh, get him! There we go. Player one. Spin that wheel. I just like this game because, like I said, it's kind of like Mario Party before Mario Party was a thing. We're gonna land on the question mark space. All right. First a quiz. All right. Number thirty-three. Mephibosheleth was Jonathan's grandson. Sounds like a made-up name. That's probably true. David was kind to Mephibosheleth because he owed him money. No? I don't... David told Mephibosheleth he, he would not restore him all the land that had belonged to Saul. Maybe, yeah. Saul sounds like a crappy guy. All right, well, one out of three ain't bad. I tried. I tried. Learning a lot about the Bible, and by that I mean I don't know a lot about the Bible. Guess I'll grab a heart container. All right. How do I spell the guy's name? Mef Mef M E P H I B O S H E T H Mef Mefboshleth. I don't know. My brain is fried. I have been streaming for almost, for well 15 hours in just a few seconds. I can't read biblical names right. Oh my god. Literally. Okay, question 30. We're running out of questions. Question 36. Mephibos Mephibosheth said, "What is your servant that you should notice a dead dog like me?" That sounds like a weird biblical phrase. 37. Ziba was instructed by David to farm the land and provide for Mephibosheth... Meph... Mephi. That's his new name now. 38. Mephi. Mephi ate at David's table like one of the king's sons. Yeah, that sounds like a... Yeah! Put a gold star on that one, baby! One. Sounds stupid even when you spell it. Sounds like a Final Fantasy character, which it sounds like. Here we go. Ah, uh, we've, we've played this one before. We can get a nice combo, though. Here it is. Whoa, look at that. What's interesting about this game is, I guess it makes it easier because it's probably intended to be more accessible to kids, is that you don't have to uh, roll the exact number to land on the uh, finish line square. You just have to roll that number or higher. Oh boy, 250 pounds of desserts. Now everybody has type 2 diabetes. Well, hang on because... I hope save your fork because we got seconds. Poof! Look at that. I'm good at this game. I take it very seriously. Which is why nobody beats me at it. Which I think contributes to why nobody wants to play me in this game. Oh, type 3 diabetes. That's even worse. 
They invented a new diabetes for that. All right, that puts me in the finish line. So I guess that's the end of the game, I guess. Even though I started the timer late. Timer is really just mostly just for looks. And see, again, they give out awards at the end. It's, it's just like Toad. So, for getting the most, the most stars in the pop quiz, that's me. Play a little bit of pomp and circumstance here. Finish first. That goes to me. Food totals. So, I have uh, 4,448. And then it just kicks you back to the... To the, to, to the uh, title screen. So we kind of got through that one relatively quickly. I guess I guess maybe that's divine intervention. Lord knows I need to I need to go to bed. So <laughs> until uh, that that is until Toad steals your win. Yeah, when he gives out all the superstars at the very end of the game, and it, that's that, that's the thing with Mario Party is that it doesn't matter how good you are at Mario Party, right? Anybody who brags about how good they are at Mario Party, I'm like, you're crazy, you're ridiculous. Nobody's good at Mario Party. The game determines whether it wants to let you win or lose, okay? Skill has nothing to do with it. Mario Kart is almost in the same echelon of games. You could be the best damn player on the planet, it doesn't matter. The game decides if you win or lose. You don't. Alright? Simple as that. Simple as that. Uh, actually, Buster Keaton rules, there are people who do speedrun this game. And essentially what they do is they obviously they want to roll high numbers all the time and essentially they uh you can hit start i think you can hit you can hit select to give up on a level immediately kind of like the suicide button in a mc kids uh and what you do is if you fail a level uh three times the game just lets you roll again and lets you continue on the board you just don't get any points for finishing the stage because you lost your turn twice or whatever that's to keep it competitive so that you can at least keep up with the other players. So speedrunning this game literally consists of just giving up the second the screen loads in. And it's kind of like... It's kind of lame, to be honest. I mean, those those speedruns are... They're almost like joke speedruns. Like, this, I play this game as a joke. I mean, that, that speedrun time, even though I started the timer late and, uh, and Mr. Inflammable said it took me about 31.16, actually, uh, if you factor in the time where the timer wasn't on... Um, it's like the world record times for this game are like minutes, like single minutes, you know, like four minutes, five minutes, something like ridiculous like that. You can get through it really quickly if you just abuse that thing. But I'm like, what's the, there's no gameplay. What's the point in doing something like that? I don't know. But anyways, Bible Buffet, you know, that's one of our wind down games. Uh, usually it's the last game on the schedule, and then we kind of say our goodbyes, but this isn't going to be the end of our Extra Life event, um, because we do have, um, we have a plethora of challenges that we've yet to get to. Um, so, again, I, uh, 31 challenges are owed, and we are currently at, um, $1,531, so... Uh, like I said, that's uh, 30 challenges, and then I always still give you one for free, although I'm starting to think that maybe y'all get the picture now, so I can I can uh, let my baby birds fly, and I don't have to keep giving you free challenges. But um, So we've only gotten through about half the challenges, and if we kept doing them, we would be up literally until the sun came up. So I'm thinking uh, the best way to do it would probably be to take a break and then tackle them later. But yeah. That's Bible Buffet. It's a great little game. I like to show it off every year. I mean, you can get the it's it's an it's an unlicensed game. So you can probably get your hands on the ROM pretty easily. Put it on you know put it on your favorite EverDrive or something like that, and get get four friends or get or, I mean get three friends and put it on four player mode. I mean it's it, you don't really need the quiz book. I think you can probably look, you can Google it and find it if you want to. Otherwise, just circle random shit and then just skip it and forget about it. But it's a fun game. It's really, like, like especially figuring out, like, because some of the levels have, like, little mini puzzles on them. One of them you can push quarters into, like, the cash register, and it makes food appear. And the food's worth, like, you know, 25 points apiece. So, you know, figuring that out is pretty cool. Uh, and, it's, of course, it's luck-based. Like I said, it's like a Candyland-style game, like you guys saw. Um, it's... I've never had the privilege of playing it with three other people because most people scoff at this. Kind of like when, kind of like when I was younger and I was always so proud of beating Echo the Dolphin. Like that game was hard as hell, okay? And I beat it when I was a kid. 
And I would brag about that on the playground that my friends in like elementary school, you know, people talking about, oh yeah, I got through Mortal Kombat on 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 uh, killer mode or whatever, or I beat Sonic the Hedgehog and I got all the Chaos Emeralds and I turned into Hyper Sonic. And I'm like, I beat Echo the Dolphin. And everybody else is like, what, that gay dolphin game? And I'm like, come, come on. It's not an easy game. It's hard. The second to last stage is a six minute auto scroller with one checkpoint in the middle. And if you die on the final stage, it kicks you back a stage to the six minute auto scroller. It's the only level that does that. The game sucks. It's hard as hell. You know, but no one knew that because nobody played that because they looked at that. They thought it was a game for girls because it had a dolphin on the cover. I'm like, you guys suck. So Bible Buffet gets the same rap. They're like, oh, people are like, oh, it's a Christian game. It's got to be automatic garbage. No. I mean, if you, it's really only Christian if you actually bust out the quiz book like, like we've done the past couple years. Other than that, it's really just, it's just a fun little game with these little easily digestible little mini games on there. And Buster Keaton Rules says, you know, talking about speedrunning, it, my approach is way more interesting and fun. Yeah, because we get to see what's on there. Like, and we saw a couple, I mean, we kind of actually blew through the game pretty fast this time around. Usually we land on a lot more spaces, but we still landed on spaces that I've never seen before. I haven't seen them, therefore you guys probably haven't seen them, because I feature this on Extra Life only, usually. So, it's fun, because there's so many spaces on the board that you're bound to land on one or two that you've never played, so it's it's something new every time. It's, it's a lot of fun. I mean, as far as... Christian games go, this is the least Christian game, even though it's got Bible in the name, and, and, and anyone can enjoy it. It's a lot of fun. You gotta give it a shot. Uh, it is coming up on 1 o'clock Central Time, and I am, uh, I am bushed. I am tired. Uh, so, um, I tell you what we're gonna do. Like, like I mentioned, you know, I, I feel, we've got, we've had such an incredible turnout for Extra Life this year. Really, this is the end of the, the second half of the official part of the Extra Life stream, but I don't want to say my goodbyes just yet because this is not going to be the end of the playlist on YouTube and it's not going to be the end of the VODs on Twitch either. There's going to be one more uh, installment tomorrow. We're going into overtime mode with this one because we've, um, we've raised so much money this year. $1,531 so far that if you know doing challenges every 50 bucks maybe i had to do a challenge every 100 bucks now i don't know like is this the new normal are we going to knock it out of the park like this every time now is this real life is is this going to be forever <laughs> you know but uh maybe, but yeah we just don't have enough hours to to tackle every single challenge in a reasonable amount of time while respecting y'all's time as well so i figure what we'll do is we'll go ahead and we'll we'll wind this down as um uh we'll uh wind this down and um uh, for now you know as the second half of the official marathon we played bible buffet that's the last officially scheduled game so now we're we're off the schedule that that's it uh we are going to have a third part to the stream and it's going to be devoted just to challenges so, um, I think I might, I don't know if I want to draw like a cutoff on there or, or what, but, um, maybe not do as many games next year and leave it open for challenges. I could do that. I could, I could do that. Cause we, we did kind of have some problems with the, uh, schedule as it was. And I did pare it down significantly from like years prior where I just stuffed the schedule full of games. So I might, I might dial it back a bit more. Uh, and that way, you know, we can do that because I feel like next year is going to be our ninth year. And then for our 10th year, I, I would like to, um, make a schedule based upon, um, all the previous marathons, the best of extra life. So no new games in our 10th year, but just ones that we featured many times or only once or twice, but were really good from the past. And we'll bring all those old favorites back and make our schedule for the 10th anniversary extra life and we'll come out you know and knock them out so but i do think next year maybe i should be a little bit lighter on the scheduled games and leave some more time open because even even the intermissions i was still playing catch up with and we were still a little bit behind but uh thank you all so much for coming out thank you taco salad for the raid earlier 
Uh, <laughs> a bunch of Keaton rules. Limiting it to one cool spot game would also probably help a lot. I just did the 7-up block as a joke. I mean, really, the 7-up block was supposed to be its own thing, and then there's gonna there was an intermission, 7-up block intermission, pretty much. But that didn't really work out too well. And then MC Kids came and just annihilated the what was left of the schedule. So you win some, you lose some. But uh, thank you all so much for coming out. Thank you all for the support. Uh, I guess I'm trying to keep this open-ended because we are going to come back tomorrow and pick up where we left off. But I'm still kind of, still mentally, it still kind of feels like the marathon's over. At least the main part. Um I mean, we've just had a, a tremendous outpouring of support from the community, and uh, I'm really proud of all of y'all. Uh, I really respect you guys. I love you guys. Thank y'all so much. Um, like I said, uh, since we still got some more time in the in the uh, marathon to do tomorrow, I'm not going to tally up uh, the bits and the subs and anything like that just yet. I'm going to wait until uh, I'm going to wait until tomorrow whenever we finish up the remaining challenges, and then I'll tally it up. And make that last that last donation, and then we'll have a we'll actually have a, a final number. So, uh, in the meantime, I'm gonna get some rest. And I think you guys should probably do the same. Go night night. Uh, <laughs> just sleep in. Thank you, thank you for the wishes, Rocky, and thank you again for the donation earlier. Uh, man, it is it has been a rush. Um, we've had some going back to the schedule. We've had some great moments. I'm really glad that we got Super Mario 35. On the, on the schedule we got to feature that just because that game's not going to be around next year MC Kids for what it was worth the Dave's Insane Sauce Insano Sauce that was a lot of fun I'm not doing it again but it was at least fun to do to have for posterity and uh, you know it's that's what it is so um, but so yeah I'm going to call it a night tonight I'm going to run the video with a reflex on it one more time and uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to hit the hay and go to bed and uh, uh, I'll keep y'all posted in the uh, Discord. Tomorrow's stream is going to be uh, overtime mode, and we're just going to focus only on the challenges that remain for, for the, uh, for the uh, charity event. Hey, thanks for checking out Gatorbox on YouTube. We really appreciate it. If you like what you saw and you want to kick around with us live, follow us on Twitch because we do this several times during the week. And if you want to support this channel, you can do so by subscribing right here on YouTube, following or subscribing over on Twitch, or even making a pledge on Patreon. Your support over the years has been tremendous. Thank you so, so much, and we look forward to seeing you in the next video right here on Gatorbox.